What's up, Yu-Gi-Oh players? My name is Alex, also known as Inch95, and I'm really feeling under the weather today, but I wanted to bring you guys a Yu-Gi-Oh card discussion and card review today on a card that I used in my regionals deck, and um, I really like it, especially in the Pendulum Mirror match, and that card today is Electric Virus. You guys mostly should know what this card does. Um, I don't own an English copy to have the exact text of it, but essentially it's a level 3 uh, light thunder type monster. It's a hand trap with 1,000 attack, 1,000 defense, where you can only use it during your turn, um, but that doesn't really matter. Obviously, if you could use it during your opponent's turn, it'd be really, really broken. But uh, what it does is essentially you discard it during your turn to take control of a face-up dragon or machine-type monster on your opponent's side of the field until the end of the turn. And you can use it for whatever. You can attack with it, you can synchro with it, you can exceed with it, you can do whatever you want with it. And right now, there aren't too many machines floating around, like, right off the bat. Like, there aren't too many machines. The only ones that are really floating around are Cosmos, and you can't target them, so it doesn't really matter for them, but... The reason why I really like this guy, especially in the Pendulum Mirror match, is the fact that there's so many dragons in there that any of the cards you take really can have so much value with this and can really lead to just OTKing your opponent out of nowhere. It almost feels like Electric Virus during Dragon Roller format, where you would be taking something like their Draco Sack, or you can take, um, you know, what's another good example? Like, Draco Sack was obviously the main one. There was other dragons if they left on the field, you could just take them, but... Uh, you, this was also used a little bit during the laggy Adolka era where you could just take their guys or you could bait out their stuff and then just take them and then just kill them with it. But um, there's a lot of cool interactions with this. I love it when you're able to take especially one of the level 8s because they happen to be Dragon, Dynaster, and Ignister. Uh, sometimes your opponent, like usually players will commit to like making uh, some combination of like 2 or 3 of these and then overlaying them for Hope Harbinger. And then they'll have like the Defense Majester Paladin or something along those lines or maybe even like a Giant Hand. Uh, or Trap Trick, Trap Leisha, right? But if they don't make the Hope Harbinger and they leave their level 8 guys on the field, you can really start to pick up their board a lot easier. Then the reason for that is you can Electric Virus whichever one you want, obviously. Usually you'll end up taking the Dynaster despite not being able to get rid of their scales. But like if you can clear their, um, you, you'll take their Ignister and if you can clear their Dynaster, you can start to use their scales, get rid of their stuff, and then you can make your own Dynaster or your own Ignister. And then you can overlay for your own Hope Harbinger. And I think it's really solid. And even if they make Hope Harbinger, there's very few cards that, like, you'll have to dedicate at least a couple cards to get rid of him. And the reason for that is, like, they're usually going to hold him for something, like, especially if it's the mirror match. They're obviously going to be holding him for something like Draco Faceoff or Wavering Eyes. And, I mean, obviously it depends, like, what they have. But typically those are some of the cards that they'll be holding it for. Um, a lot of people aren't necessarily main decking Raigeki. And if they side it, they'll usually just side it and going second, right? So they're, if they're going first and you're going second, they're probably, you know, they're... Uh, the problem, they could be holding it theoretically for your Regeki, if you, assuming you sided it in, uh, which you probably did, but the point is, like, being able to just take Hope Harbinger, and then being able to make your own board with, like, whatever the other five cards you have are, and not really fearing Wavering Eyes, because they could set Wavering Eyes if they didn't use it on their turn, so you could take their Hope Harbinger, right, if they just have, like, a Majestar on the field, and then you can use your other five cards to do whatever you want, and if they try to Wavering you, you can detach, uh, not detach, but you can take their, um, you can take their guy, their, uh, their their spell, and make it a material. And then you can make something like Diamond Dire Wolf, pop their um, you know, Majest or whatever card that they have. Use that to give your Hope Harbinger 2,000 attack because obviously something like uh, Diamond Dire being destroyed and, you know, is destroying an XYZ. So you can give it 2,000 attack. And then all you have to do is put another 3,000 damage on the board and just kill them. So, and, and that's really easy to do with even like three, four cards. I mean, and the fact that using Electric Virus is only one card and if you're going second, you're going to have five other cards to work with. Uh, means that there's a ton of potential for just kill your opponent out of nowhere with a card like this. And that's why I really, really like this card. It's really a surprise factor. And a lot of players aren't really catching on to it. And I, I think it's something that's, that's really relevant, especially if some of the Pendulum decks and Pendulum players that I've been like collaborating with and talking to. Um, I still think like I know like the advantage of going first are great, you know, especially if you're using like the Psalms and stuff. But I'm just a huge advocate of like going second, even against, um, especially against the Mirror Match. Uh, especially if you're playing something like the Dark Variant, because really all your cards are combo pieces, and really you don't have to like you don't have any of the dead traps to like impede your um, like you're obviously not going to have them going second because you're obviously even if you had a mage you were just going to go second and side them out. And I don't know, I really like Electric Virus. I think it's a card that a lot of people are overlooking, and being able to pick apart any of these boards. I mean, even if they have something just like a Majestor on the field, you're able to really just take this, use this effect, detach. Um, attack. Obviously, you'd have to give this back if you can't kill them, but, like, if they use it during their turn, uh, and use it during your turn, they're not going to be able to get any more value out of him. And really, just taking any of these guys is fantastic. Like, even just taking something like an, uh, a Dynaster, when they, if, let's say they don't make a Hope Harbinger, and they just make something like this, 
If you just take their uh, Dynaster and you're reading that they save their Wavering, if like let's say they didn't use Wavering on their turn, you can take their Dynaster, do your play, and then they can't Wavering eyes you, right? And then after all your stuff's done, then you can like overlay with this guy, you're gonna attack with him, and then overlay for your own Hope Heartbanger. So there's a lot of plays uh, with Electric Virus. I feel like just being able to break established boards so, so easily with this and really take apart those soft locks because essentially Hope Heartbanger and Dynaster can really be problematic soft locks, especially if they're backed up by a trap. And uh, obviously if they have traps and stuff, it's, it's gonna be much harder, but really being able to take away uh, one of their parts of their lock is uh, like I would take that over rather than trying to have this be any other card that can't do that by itself and then trying to make it work with like other combo pieces you know it's just, I don't know I like I like one card outs like this to a lot of the established boards that they might have and um in testing I really really like this card and uh you know I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying hopefully more people use it moving forward but I figured I'd give it to you guys as a suggestion if you guys have any like regionals or anything coming up um, I know my next regionals isn't until like May, so that's way, way far down the line, and by then we'll probably have a different format anyways, so I figured I'd share this with you guys. Um, obviously, Dan doesn't really have images, so I'm pretty sure most of you guys are probably just playtesting on if you are either in real life or on DevPro or YGO Pro or whatever other platform you use, so um, you guys should give this card a try. If you guys like it, let me know. If you guys don't like it, well, let me know as well why you didn't like it. And uh, yeah, obviously it's not like searchable, there aren't really too many interactions with it, but um, really it's just that one card out that you could draw. And it's also a top deck, I mean there's a couple of situations where I literally just topped this card and was able to just clear a board when we're going back and forth after a couple turns with uh, the mirror match. So um, I think this card's really, really strong. Um, and yeah, it's not that great going first, but going second is usually like my preferred um, situation anyway. Like I usually prefer to go second anyway, so it's not that much of a problem uh, for me. So yeah, I'll see you guys, peace out. Yeah, if you guys are electric virus, uh, please drop a like, subscribe if you already have it, it helps the channel grow, and uh, I'll see you guys in my next video, peace out, and uh, I'm really not feeling too great, like I said, I'm really under the weather, I don't want to like pan over my camera right now, just because there's like so many like tissues and stuff, It's my desk is an absolute mess, um, and I know I was planning on doing Road to the King, uh, Patrick Hoban's book, obviously, a review, I'm only about a third through the book, there's like my little placeholder, I'm about a third way through the book, give or take, um, so I'll probably start doing my chapter reviews really, really soon. Like I said, I did get in touch uh, with Patrick Hoban. He said he is willing to do like a, a video breakdown with me, but uh, and he, he got back to me, except we haven't really figured out a time and he hasn't really followed up with it. So uh, I'm not really certain when that'll happen. Obviously, he and I both have personal lives, so uh, I'm sure we have other priorities to attend to before that, but I still do plan on doing the, this. If he doesn't hit me up within the next couple of days, I'll probably just do like the first couple episodes by myself and then try and hit him up again. And then uh, maybe we can start doing some video breakdowns of his book because I'm really enjoying it more or less. Uh, the first part is a lot more theory based in terms of uh, in terms of philosophy and just like individual approaches and, you know, biases and, um, and a lot of fallacies that individuals can have uh, going into the game. So um, it's a lot less technical in this first third or so of the book that I'm reading. But uh, I, I skipped a little bit ahead just to see some previews and uh, it definitely gets really in detail in terms of uh, technical play and things like that. So can't wait to get to that and uh, I'm really interested in seeing some of the things that this book has to offer. So I'll see you guys. Peace out. And uh, remember, duelists, limits like fears are often just an illusion. I'll see you next time, guys. Hope you enjoyed this card review and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with a Dragon Ball Super anime review. Bye, guys.